Today's determined attackers easily bypass even the most advanced network defenses. Trying to ramp up staff to detect their back doors can cost thousands of dollars and take months, even years. With Active Countermeasures AI Hunter, we enable junior analysts to detect even the most advanced back doors in a matter of hours. Sign up for a demo and purchase our product today by visiting activecountermeasures.com forward slash PSW. Active Countermeasures. Make every analyst a hunter. The average time between being hacked and realizing you've been hacked is one year. Can you afford to let an intruder roam your network for that long? Can your company weather the fallout when this comes to light? Black Hills Information Security can find the bad guys in your network and train you to do it yourself. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to find out how a hunt teaming engagement can help you find a persistent threat in your network. Welcome back, everyone, to Paul's Security Weekly. This, believe it or not, is the technical segment, even though there's some ridiculous things I have to get through uh, and not so ridiculous things like an announcement. So if you're interested in quality over quantity and having meaningful conversations rather than just a badge scan, April 1st through the 3rd, Disney's Contemporary Resort, InfoSec World 2019, there is a discount code. We will be there. I will be presenting os 19 sec Week for 15% off the main conference or a world pass. Uh, also, we uh, would like to welcome our new sponsor, Thinks. Am I reading that in this one? Am I? Okay. Th- uh, it, uh, Haroon's really awesome, and you should buy his stuff. How is that for resounding enjoy? <laughs> but I think you guys will back me up on that, right? Haroon's been on the show and uh, is just hilarious on all the calls that I've been on with him so far recently. Oh, yeah. I missed Haroon, and now uh, his uh, company, Thinks, uh, is a proud sponsor of Paul Security Weekly, awesome. and you should go to securityweekly.com. It's actually forward slash canary, because uh, canary is easier to spell and say than thinks, in my opinion. So I made it securityweekly.com forward slash canary makes deception uh, devices that are really awesome. It's got some open source stuff there as well. So um, let's see. The next thing, it's my birthday today, and so <coughs> we had cake. I, I blew up my candles, and then the cake disappeared, <laughs> which... It's awesome. And uh, I have this, what I thought was champagne, but is one of the celebration things. So to celebrate my birthday, which is really, it's really special because I'm 42 now. And <laughs> the, uh, life, the, answer, the answer to life, the universe, and yeah, everything. My wife got me this t-shirt that says uh, life, the universe, and everything. And it's a Venn diagram. And in the middle, it's 42. Oh, I thought it would be an arrow pointing down. No. <laughs> <laughs> be a really small universe, Larry. Yeah. Uh, so, to celebrate my that I'm now 42, uh, we're gonna turn I'd the keep ducking, Larry. Oh my God! I almost broke a light. <laughs> <laughs> Did I break a light, or is that bulb supposed to be out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I managed to not... Oh, I did get some of my drink. Oh, so you have to drink some of the confetti. And with that, Corey, that was all for you, really. Uh, Corey Finley is here with us. He got to start in information security in July. Uh, 2014 is a junior security engineer today. PKT <laughs> Recon. Did I get that right? Did I say that? Larry, annotate that that's wrong. <laughs> no, I don't, actually. Corey, welcome to the program this evening. Thanks, Sam. Thank you for having me. Happy birthday, dude. Hey, thanks, man. It's good to have you here. I know we chatted at uh, DerbyCon about having you on the show to uh, tell us about PKT Recon. Did I say that right? Is that right? Yeah, this, I spell it that way. I just I call it Packet Recon. But Packet yeah, Recon. All righty. Yeah. Corey, take it away and tell us all about it. So I, uh, I did a blog post uh, in summer uh, of last year about uh, doing uh, recon on internal network segments with broadcast and uh, service discovery protocol traffic. Uh, basically, you know, uh, a, a silent and passive way of, of gathering all the data that you would want to know um, about devices, about nodes on an internal network that you might want to go after. Uh, uh, yeah, so the idea was basically that, you know, you can find all of this data, you know, like host names, IP addresses, uh, windows, uh, fingerprints, um, potential, you know, SMB server fingerprints, Samba fingerprints, um, and switch fingerprints via, you know, Cisco discovery protocol and, uh, LLDP, um, so kind of writing a tool that can go through a, a, a packet capture, you know, and, and uh, be able to get that kind of data um, without ever having to actually actively touch 
a, a host on the network. Is, and Corey, was, you don't you don't need a span port for this or network tap, right? No, this it's, it, all, it's basically using uh, just just um, traffic that's broadcasted. Or um, I I like I dreamed that a tool like this would exist mm-hmm. several. In fact, Carlos, I think you and I talked about a tool like this when we were looking into various protocols at at one point. But like, it'd really be nice to have a tool because when I would look at packet captures and other other tools, it would contain snippets of this discovery protocol information. Yes. I'm like, oh, it'd be really cool to have a tool that just did that. And you know, it, what does Mike Poor say? If you click your heels three times and think about it really hard, you'll go do a Google search and find it on the internet. Corey, you or or if you or if you ask a group of infosec professionals, man, wouldn't it be nice if we had, had a this? tool for that, right? And, and then, asking, <laughs> you shall receive. So, Corey, thank you. This this is great. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you. Um, and and yeah, you know, I and I always you know like to make it clear that it's no substitute for for tools that do active scanning or enumeration. Sure. Uh, it's not going to, you know, be as accurate. But um, if you if you're on a network, you know, that has Windows browser traffic and LDP and uh, CDP and um, oh, and, and, and then there's network, but Corey, like, not just Windows, but uh, when it was OS 10 and now Mac OS, very very chatty on those discovery. Carlos, what were the ones that you would, did? You do some research on that, or did we just talk about it one time? I think we we only talked about it. I I remember we're talking about uh, LLMR, CDP, uh, and there were a couple other more. Uh, that right now I rem- I remember the conversation came out that you mentioned CDP and me going back and saying, oh, let me look at it, and then come back. Oh, the industry is moving away from CDP mm. to this other protocol, and we went kind of from there and also talking about uh, PBS related to it. Right, right. Yeah, so this is this is awesome, Corey. Continue. Please. Oh yeah. So um basically in just you know, like uh um uh he had mentioned as well, uh L M and R uh definitely is is something that we can get data from and um it's just it's really awesome to to you know basically my goal was to create a tool that can get this data silently. Um, and basically, you know, you get on a network, the, the first thing that you can do is do a packet capture before anything else, right? And so, um, or just, you know, the tool also does support doing active uh, uh, packet captures. Um, on the network interface is just the output <laughs> is uh, currently in progress on that. So, oh, so sorry, Code, do you have that feature today? Can I actively sniff? Um, you can actively sniff. It just, uh, it's not going to output the data properly. That's not gotcha. a done. Yet. I kind of, the first step was kind of just being able to capture those packets and forward them on to the modules that are required to parse out the, mm-hmm. uh, the, the data from the packets. Gotcha. But you're working on that. It sounds like. Yeah. That's, it's one of multiple things being worked on <laughs> gotcha. right now for sure. I hear you. And, and would this be a post-exploitation tool, or would it be something that you would do on an initial recon, let's say, that you've got a foothold in the wireless network, or you were able to connect uh, a drop box into a uh, network jack? Basically, yeah, that would be the idea. If you have a, any type of remote device in the network that you can connect to, like a drop box, okay. or um, if you're even uh, on a Windows host uh, after getting uh, initial access into a network, and you can capture packets and, uh, um, you know, XFIL PCAPs, then absolutely either or uh, would be a valid scenario. Cool. Sorry, Corey, continue. Uh, um, so uh, with that being said, um, I, uh, I do have a demo prepared. Sweet. Of the tool so um now uh i had to th- this basically the the data that you're seeing is sanitized but it's it's from a an actual pcap real life in the wild packet capture so um it's one of the several pcaps that i use to develop the tool but it discloses a lot of awesome information so, do you just want me to uh, share my, yeah, my screen? Yeah, 
between. Okay. Awesome. So you can see my screen just fine. That's correct. If you want to make the text uh, a little bigger. Yeah. Let me see here. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Sweet. All right. So basically, uh, it's going to load the PCAP into memory, um, and then it's going to go through all, all of the supported protocols to look for data. There's some protocols that are being implemented that aren't finished as well, uh, like dynamic trunking protocol is definitely one of them. Um, but it'll just go through this PCAP now. Uh, DHCP uh, v4 bootstrap, Windows browser, uh, uh, IPv6. Bootstrap, um, LDP, CDP. Oh, LDP is popping up twice. Uh, do you run into any resource constraints trying to do all this in memory? Um, so large PCAPs definitely are an issue, um, and I'm looking as to how I want to handle that. The best PCAP, depending on how busy the network is, my experience, five to ten minutes, um, you know, of a, on a packet capture is is generally like the the best time frame um, and obviously adjust where you need to based on how busy the network is. So this is going to be a little difficult to see because the output is kind of messed up. I didn't expect to have to maximize my screen here. Yeah, no worries. It's wrapping. That's right. We, we can still see it. Yeah. So here we have um, some host names. Uh, all down here, you have your host, your IPv4. Uh, if there is an IPv6 address, it'll be their MAC address uh, domain. And also a server type, which is coming out of uh, Windows um, browser uh, datagram host announcements. Um, so you have the server type, which will disclose if it's a, a DC, uh, a backup DC, a SQL server, a printer. Um, and then it will also parse out the Windows NT version uh, and evaluate that to determine, you know, what kind of uh, workstation or server Windows OS it would be. And if there is a host comment within uh, host announcements or local browser announcements, uh, those will be parsed out and added to the, the Windows OS fingerprint. Um, because generally you'll get Samba server fingerprints, for example, like this guy down here. Um, and that's all coming out of these packets that are going to broadcast addresses on a network that you know you don't have to do anything in order to obtain. You don't have to talk to anything to get this data. So that's pretty valuable uh, for me. You have uh, LDP and uh, CDP devices down here. Um, I do need to annotate in the output which protocol uh, these packet, this data is coming from still, but here you can get the uh, management ID and the power capabilities uh, via CDP. You have your platform, which discloses a full Meraki uh, model, um, port IDs and VLAN um, IDs as well. Uh, here you can uh, also potentially get usernames from uh, SMB uh, direct, it would be uh, like old SMB uh, uh, net logon, like the old uh, logon protocol, which broadcasts the same way that Windows browser does. And um, within those direct uh, group broadcasts, uh, usernames are disclosed, uh, as well as uh, Unicode uh, host names. Um, and then that host name will will uh, be searched for within the currently uh, collected data to determine if there's a domain for that host and if that host is even in there. And if it is, then we can also disclose a domain for it and uh, and build out an AD username. Uh, down, down here in this uh, area, the fingerprints are disclosed. I'm just in a list currently right now. I still haven't figured out how I want to disclose the, the fingerprints. The domains are uh, done the same way. Um, but yeah, you're able to basically see if a host is, uh, you know, a server 2003 or XP host, um, 
really just potentially, you know, being able to take this data and maybe correlate it with other data that I haven't thought about using yet, you know, we can uh, have more certainty in fingerprinting. Corey, the uh, the fingerprints, is that a P0F kind of module or using the other uh, discovery protocol data to determine the OS? It's it's Windows browser uh, datagrams that are basically disclosing um, their Windows NT version. Mm -hmm. And these Windows NT versions correspond to Windows operating system uh, versions uh, for servers and for regular workstation, you know, end user mm -hmm. OS versions. Do you have any trouble misidentifying? So the only time that uh, I miss the, so far that um, I, I know I've misidentified hosts uh, was with um, something uh, my friend uh, uh, Will Genovese pointed out to me that um, even though I was pulling these NT version numbers to evaluate the Windows OS versions, um, I was getting false positives for a Ubuntu um, server or just even a workstation that was running Samba. Um, and that Samba server discloses Windows NT version numbers. So I was, you know, had a Ubuntu host that I thought was running Windows. And so once I started disclosing host comment data within those uh, OS fingerprints, I started seeing, you know, uh, a host name, you know, name like Ubuntu, and then uh, a Windows OS version uh, followed by samba ubuntu or ubuntu samba server you know so on and so forth um and so uh, as i refine the tool i'll obviously be taking this data and correlating it in such a way that we can determine you know what the os actually is but in the meantime um i will say that if you do see something like that and it's it's showing up as linux or there's a, a linux fingerprint uh, in there somewhere then it, it's probably linux Corey, how, how long do you have to sniff the network to discover most of the things? Is there? <clears throat> I know some of these protocols are really chatty, but in your kind of testing, like what's the amount of time you think uh, is most optimal? It really depends on real uh, if these protocols are there, um, which is kind of another thing that I always try to 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 um, you know make clear is that none of this data, like the data that you're seeing in this demo, is guaranteed. Um, it's basically looking in these PCAPs to, or, uh, or eventually, you know, uh, packets on a live uh, network interface to determine, you know, if it's there, then let, let's look for, you know, what we can find with that. So if we're seeing LDP traffic, like we know we can find X, Y, and Z uh, within those packets potentially. So let's go look th through them. But if you're on a network and you're capturing traffic passively, you know, and none of these protocols are in use, um, then you could end up not getting anything at all. Um, and so that's kind of why I always say, you know, this isn't a, a, a substitute for active tools, but it's definitely a viable option uh, that's worth looking at before you do have to resort to active measures to obtain this data. Corey, have you considered adding uh, Apple's Bonjour protocol? Is that still used uh, by Apple? Secondary question. Mm -hmm. I I haven't. Um, I've I've been uh, mm -hmm. trying to add protocols and refine them um, <laughs> as often as possible between like uh, regular work and uh, just personal life. Yeah. life you know, basically mm -hmm. everything else. So uh, being the only developer on this is time consuming but yeah uh, what you, well what you're referring to is multicast dns yep. uh that's what when you're uses so the advantage of multicast dns is that you may probably not be able to fingerprint the host but at the very least you're going to be able to get hey this host exists it has this service available and this service is available at this port so mm -hmm. multicast dns is almost like srb records uh, but the thing is that you're broadcasting those out to everybody. So when I did the blog uh, last summer and uh, before Packet Recon, uh, the tool is called Net Recon. Um, and 
that that uh the, the first rendition of this basically did have mdns and i think i took it out and i haven't implemented it back in yet because i was rewriting it mm. um but MDM, mdns is definitely um something worth looking at and there's some other protocols or actually protocols that i'm looking at now um that i still need to implement for ipv6 so nice. um but that yeah de- getting mdns back in this tool is definitely going to be uh, valuable and worthwhile. Cool. Any other questions for Corey? Yeah. Um, so what, what protocols are next on your list of what you'd like to add, ignoring your fact that you're a single, single person working on it? Um, besides MDNS, uh, I would like to finish dynamic trunking protocol. Um, I would like to um, look at basically anything else that I could pull out of Windows browser datagrams. I can actually disclose any server type uh, that basically is available uh, in the output of the tool. I just haven't figured out how I want to go about it because the output um, for it is going to be, you know, potentially difficult if you're getting these server types uh, from these browser packets, you know, you could have one host that's identifying itself as a workstation server printer, um, backup DC, like uh, uh, so many different things that uh, um, kind of taking that data and painting the picture, you know, um, and tailoring that towards attackers is is really like the ultimate goal. But um, in terms of protocols, um, for now, just just probably MDNS and uh, uh, sorry. There's Super probably well, there's probably a, a series of um, routing indoor network <clears throat> protocols mm-hmm. that are pretty chatty historically. Joffre Carlos would probably be SSDP would be another one too as well. Yes. Um, you, you and yeah, I know there's there's a ton more protocols out there that are and uh, uh, that are super loud that I'm probably not even looking at yet. But um, Yeah, Joff, did you have a comment on the yeah, network protocols? Yeah, I did. Um, multicast uh, OSPF. Yep. Uh, if it's advertising on a link, we'll give you actually route advertisements that will let you learn the entire topology of the network. Wow. Advertisements. Um, advertisements. You sound advertisements. so sophisticated when you say that, Joff. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, oh yes, baby. Would those um, advertisements be made of aluminum? <laughs> <laughs> Al- aluminium. That's right. How, how can I? How can I win with this audience? I mean, these guys. I mean, shit. Um. So yeah, decoding OSPF link state advertisements is uh advertisements is um. Uh, yeah, all you have to do is high, lose highly, the accent. Come on. Highly desirable. Um. And you may want to look at that. Um. I've actually written a similar tool to you. Um, I just haven't picked it up in, in some time, but network broadcast and multicast is certainly a wealth of information. Dynamic linking protocol, I would agree with you. Um, uh, EIGRP uh, in the Cisco yeah. only world yep. for route protocol uh, is yep. also a very good one to learn information from. Uh, if you're running interior BGP, that might be a good one too, but um, more, more so the link state. Uh, advertisement protocols because those things will multicast. What about like, like RIP V1? Uh, RIP V1, yeah, that wow. would go into it. But um, yeah, I like to think not many people are running that. I like uh, to HS- think that too. But you know what? If we had the capability yeah. to find out. <laughs> yeah. Um, HSRP and mm-hmm. GRRP, VRRP. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, um, those are all uh, broadcast. Those send all send traffic to the broadcast, Joff? That's my question. Yeah, they do. They're, mu- yes. they're multicast. They're yeah, multicast. Yeah, multicast. So anything, right. that sends, anything that sends stuff to multicast, multicast for avata- yeah. advertising first hop redundancy protocols uh, yeah. is kind of useful because then you Joff, can look at it. It sounds priority. like you should get with Corey <laughs> and you should just start contributing to Corey's tool. Corey, as long as you're okay with folks contributing to your project, I nominate Joff to be the first external contributor. I'm more oh, than happy to have help. Um, <laughs> there you go. I, uh, yeah. I, eventually, I like I've got anything else to do. Um, so. Yeah, Corey, maybe we should talk offline a little bit. I've got, uh, um, I've actually got some command, uh, some command like help uh, for Python. If you can write it in the command shell, the command loop uh, in Python, you can uh, spawn off sniffer threads as as uh, 
ways to collect information without actually having it just run interactively right there in the uh, in in the shell and just populate the database and and like have it show up real time information. So I might be able to help you out with that. That'd be awesome. I think this this project has a whole lot of merit. It's mm -hmm. again a tool that I've I've wanted for some time. Now it exists, and uh, you know if folks want to help uh, Corey in addition to Joff. I would uh, encourage that, and I, I think this is a, a fantastic effort, and I'm uh, anxious to see where, where it goes from here. I, I am too. I think it's really, really good. It's sort of land reconnaissance is basically yes. what you look at. I don't know what you end up naming it, but land reconnaissance is extremely useful because, like, like you have noted, uh, uh, Corey, the, the, so many protocols are so chatty, multicast, and broadcast. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. It means a lot. Awesome. No worries. Uh, and folks can find this uh, open source on GitHub. There is a link in the show notes, wiki.securityweekly.com. It's episode 589. Corey, thank you so much for appearing thank on Paul Security yeah, Weekly. Birthday. Thank you. One. Thank you. Without taking a short break, come back to the security news even for this week. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 